Hi. Today we are going to speak or discuss about the brain tumors. Brain tumors sort of cause an scare, a fear uh, in the mind of everybody. What is going to happen? Whether I'm going to get paralyzed? Whether I'm going to survive or not? So all these things can be taken care of in case we have a timely diagnosis and a good treatment. The brain tumors can be of two types cancerous and non-cancerous one question what we neurosurgeons have been frequently asked is how does brain tumors happen brain tumor happen because one day one gene decides that it has to multiply and the make the cells grow double if it's a cancerous tumor then it will grow faster if it's a non-cancerous tumor it will grow slower so in technical language, sometimes you will listen to it, like it's a malignant tumor or a benign tumor. Malignant tumor is a cancerous tumor, benign tumor is a non-cancerous tumor. Brain tumors, they symptom, they produce the symptoms as per their location. Headache is attributed very commonly to the brain tumors. Now, what happens in headache? The headache of brain tumors differs from other headache is that in the headache of the brain tumor, person wakes up from the sleep. In the headaches of migraine, the person are unable to sleep because of the brain tumor. Out here, in the headache of uh, brain tumor, the patient is uh, generally, when it will get up in the morning, they have a headache followed by nausea or the vomiting. While in the cases of uh, non-cancerous or non-malignant uh, or non-tumorous brain headaches, the headache generally progresses through the day rather than occurring early in the morning. That is number one. Number two, the another common symptom is change in the vision, or person starts seeing double in the vision. That is happening happens because there is pressure inside the brain, which causes the pressure on the optic nerves, and that causes the uh, doubling of the vision or decrease in the vision. Thirdly, there could be weakness of one side or other side depending upon the location of the tumor. Say the tumor is on the left side, the person might be having weakness on the right side. If the person is having tumor on the right side, the uh, weakness would be on the left side. On the left side, if the tumor is there, the person may be having a problem with the speech. If the uh, tumor is in the front of the part of the brain, the person can have a memory lapses, person can have a personality change or behavioral change. If the tumor is in the small brain, like the back of the uh, brain, back of the head, then the person might be having difficulties in eating, swallowing, or having a deviation of mouth, or there is some paralysis sort of thing. Or uh, another very important sign is that the person starts experiencing difficulty in walking. You know, what we call in medical terminology is an ataxia. The person wobbles like as if patient has taken a lot of alcohol and they wobble while walking. So these are the common signs and symptoms which occur in the brain tumors. Now, uh, are the brain tumors treatable? Yes, brain tumors are treatable with the timely diagnosis. What is the best modality to diagnose a brain tumor? The best modality to diagnose a brain tumor is MRI scan. MRI scan with a contrast most of the time delineates what kind of tumor it is, what approach a surgeon should take and how it needs to be done. So the diagnosis is made, person has a brain tumor, now the question comes, it's a cancer or non-cancerous. Most of the time your surgeon will be able to tell you uh, on an MRI scan, it's a cancer or non-cancerous tumor, but uh, we get to finally when we take a tumor out and send it for histopathological examination, which in common parlance is called biopsy. So in the brain tumor, when you're taking out the tumor, you take out the tumor as much as possible. The first consideration is that the person should be at least uh, similar uh, state. That means the person should not deteriorate. It should be about the same when uh, after the surgery, before the surgery is there. That means the chances of the deficit, that means paralysis or vision problem, all those should be minimized with the before the surgery. And in today's world, it can be done using the best quality equipments like having a very good microscope, endoscope, a neuromonitoring system. And the team has to be there. When it's not that you're any uh, neurosurgeon, any anesthesia team, any scrub team, all those things uh, uh, can be done. No, you have to have an integrated team 
of surgeon, anesthesiologist, scrub staff, the good monitoring system, technique, technology, all these things has to be there. And with all these things, you can uh, not only give a good uh, surgical result, but as, a, as well as you can give a very good quality of life. Uh, like my patients in most of the brain tumors, we don't even remove hairs. The patients are discharged as early as in about four to five days in most of the cases, say about more than 90% of the cases. So this is the thing which uh, improves the outcome in the surgery. And post-operatively, post patient needs to be in the ICU. We have an excellent neuroanesthesia team. They will be discussing with you about the critical care aspect of the brain tumor surgery. So uh, brain tumor surgery is not something in today's world to fear of. It's something to fight it out and to win.